Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this exciting Mason Media tutorial we'll be diving into the mysterious, magical, mystical and wonderful world of Adobe After Effects. This tutorial is aimed to be a bare bones, get up and starting, start making stuff type of tutorial. We're just going to dive in and make a little project right away that'll cover a bunch of the most fundamental aspects of Adobe After Effects, at least in my opinion. I've been using After Effects for almost a decade now, so I have some idea of what tools we use a lot and what tools we don't. That being said, there's a whole lot more to learn and I'm rambling, so let's get started. So instead of Adobe After Effects, you open it up and you get this new screen right away. So you see we've got our last open projects, but we're not going to deal with that. We're going to create a new project. You see we've got a couple sections to our interface here. We've got some tools up here, which you'll be able to click on. We've got our project window, which is where your assets will be. Effect controls, a composition viewer, which is where our image will show up. We've got all these other little tool panels down here, which you can open up and collapse at will. And we've got our timeline down here. So the first thing we're going to have to do is create a new composition. And this is the container where you hold all of your stuff. If you're familiar with NLEs like Premiere or Final Cut, this is a sequence. So new composition right there, big old button. You see you get this new composition window. You can have all these different settings in here. So these are looking pretty good. We've got our width and height and pixels. You've got our square pixels. We've got our start frame set at zero. Our duration is set at 100 frames. Our background color will be set to black. And we can hit OK. We don't need to worry about advanced or 3D in this tutorial because we're not going to be covering it. OK. So there we go. We've got comp one. And we could rename it on that other window, or you can rename it right here in the project panel by hitting enter and typing in main or whatever you want it to be called. Also, if you miss whatever keyboard shortcuts I hit, you can see down in the left-hand corner of the screen, we've got them appearing there. So in case I forget to mention something, that's where you find them. So now you can see we're looking great. We've got nothing showing up, just a black box, but that's better than we had before. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a little animation where a box animates on and then splits into two and reveals some text across the screen and that text glows and looks cool and that'll be it. So the first thing that we have to do, it's the basis of most of creating stuff instead of After Effects is creating a solid. So you can go up to layer, new, solid, but you're never going to want to do it that way. You're always going to want to use control Y or command if you're on a Mac. If you're on a Mac and every time I say control, I mean command. And every time I say alt, I mean option because I'm on Windows. And the more you use After Effects, the more you'll see the benefits of Windows, but that's all I'm going to say about that. So control Y, create a new solid. You can see it looks very similar to our new composition dialog. We've got our width and height of the solid. You can change the units. You can change the pixel aspect ratio. If you have it set to something funny like we had before, you can make it comp size, so 1920 by 1080. We want to make a square, so you can leave it at this and use a mask, or you can just make it the correct size right off the bat. So I'm going to make it 100 pixels by 100 pixels. Hit enter, and there it comes in. It's red, but I don't want it to be red. I want to change the color. So we could have changed it in there before, but since I went too fast, we're going to have to go back and change it again. So you can hit Control shift y If you remember, the keyboard shortcut for creating a new solid was Control y so Control shift y is edit the solid. And I can change the color to white right over there. Hit OK, hit OK, and there it is. So great. Now we're looking good. This is very abstract. Wow, looking good. So now we're going to start animating. We want this square to scale on. So it'll start too small for us to see and then come up to this size. So we'll move forward about um, eight frames or so. And then we will twirl down this little disclosure triangle here. And you see we get transform, twirl that down. You see we have anchor point, position, scale, rotation, and opacity. And there's these little stopwatches next to each of them. And these stopwatches will tell you if keyframing is enabled or not. And what keyframing is, is when you turn this on, you see we get this little frame here, and that says, at this moment in time, 8 frames, this parameter scale is this value, 100%. So then we move back to frame 0, and we say, make the scale to 0. See, now the square is too small for us to see, but if we move forward, After Effects automatically interpolates between those two frames. And it does that by default linearly, so it's just a straight, straight on like that. But what you're going to want to do most of the time in After Effects is select these frames and hit F9 on your keyboard. You can also right click and go to Keyframe Assistant, Easy Ease, but you just want to use F9. And before we get into more advanced animation stuff, just know most of the time you're going to want to do this until you have a little more After Effects under your belt. And what that does is it starts it slow, and then it speeds it up, and then it slows it down again. So if we just pop over to a part that we're not going to be using this, it's the graph editor, you see the speed starts it slow and then it goes fast and then back down but if we had it at linear i just hit control z to go back to how it is before it's just the same speed all the way along so control shift z to go back and back to our timeline and now if we play this through 
Look at that, it's looking pretty good. But we want it to be a little more energetic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have it overshoot itself some. So we're gonna go back to about frame five and I'll make this go up to 110. And you see it automatically inserts another keyframe. It's easy eased again. And then if we play through it, boop, bounces a little bit. And we wanna move this keyframe so it's a little bit more energetic. That's looking pretty good. Soup, maybe even a little bit more energy. Nice, there we go. You see right now I'm playing and it's trying to play the whole composition, but we don't wanna do that for now. We just wanna play uh, maybe up until frame 15 and have it loop. So what we can do is we can either click and drag this little guy here, which is our preview area, or we can just hit N on the keyboard and that'll automatically move the end of the preview area to your playhead. And you can do the same thing with the beginning or you can hit B on your keyboard and it'll automatically move it right there, just like that. So now if we play through, there it goes, looking good, but there's a way to make it look even better. And this is one of the best features of After Effects. It's really simple, it's really fundamental to the way After Effects works, but oh great, it's so good. And that is motion blur. So you see right now, if you zoom in, this square sort of is sharp on all these frames as it's moving. And if you like wave your hand in front of your face, you see that your hand's not sharp the entire time through. So that is called motion blur. And it's a natural thing and it's good and it makes all your animations look better. So how we get to motion blur is, you see right now we have our little source name, mode, our preserve underlying transparency, track mat, and parenting controls here. We need to switch these around by hitting F4 on your keyboard. If you're on a Mac or a laptop, make sure that you do not have you know function keys enabled or whatever, make sure these are actually doing the F key values, otherwise you're gonna have a bad time. And you see that switches over to these whole new set of tools. And this little three circles here is our motion blur checkbox. You just check that on here and if we play through, nothing happens again because we need to enable motion blur for the composition. So I'll click it here. You see now it's gonna slow down our render, but look at how much smoother this is when it comes on. So you can see the edges of our square are a little bit, a little bit fuzzy there. And that makes a big difference. But it's good to have this global checkbox to turn on and off because that will slow down your render times. After Effects' render engine is built for, for torque more than it's built for speed. So you're going to have to render a lot, which is basically the computer baking all the frames out to memory so it can play them back and doesn't have to process each thing. So it's sort of saving the way each image looks so it doesn't have to do all the math each time. After Effects works this way because you're going to be doing lots and lots of stuff that takes a lot of computational power. So it doesn't try and be real time. It tries to make sure that it will be able to render it all without crashing, which is nice. But it does take some computer power. So now we're looking good. The square is coming on nice and energetically. We have some motion blur enabled, but that's not our whole animation. So it comes on and now we're going to have it split into two and zoom off on either side of the frame and reveal some text. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to name it square first with a capital. Hit enter. Use enter just like before to change the name of the layer. And now to duplicate this, we can do it a couple different ways. You can choose whatever way you want. I'm going to do it a particular way just because that's the way my brain thinks. So you can hit control or command D and duplicate it. But I'm going to use control or command shift D. And what that does is that'll split the layer up top. And now if we twiddle these down and we see our keyframes are still there, so we can delete those. Also, if you don't want to twiddle those down, you can just select the layer and hit U on your keyboard, and that'll automatically show you all of the keyframe values, which is a very handy thing. It's just going to click the stopwatch, and that will delete all the keyframes there. Make sure you don't do that by accident, because that can really throw you for a loop if you aren't expecting it. So now everything still looks exactly the same, but we're going to have this other layer to work with, and then we're going to duplicate this again. So now we have these two squares, so square, square two, square three, looking good, and we're gonna animate these off to the side. So we are going to access our position control on there. So we can do the same thing by twiddling down transform, or you can hit P on the keyboard. And all the different transform values in here have a different keyboard shortcut. So A is for anchor point, P is for position, S is for scale, R is for rotation, and T is for opacity, not O. So T for transparency, that's just the way it is. And you'll get used to it pretty quick. So P for position, we're gonna scoot forward some so it has a little bit of rest time, add a keyframe, scoot forward another couple frames, and then we can either click and drag, holding down shift to constrain it to just the X value, click and drag it off, but I wanna be sure that these two squares move the exact same pace. So what I'm gonna do instead is enter in a value here manually. So here's our X position, and we can either you know type in 2000 or whatever we want it to be, 200, you know, whatever, or, 
we can do some basic math in here. So I'm going to do plus 1200 pixels and then boom, it moves it right off to the side there because I know that this composition is 1920 pixels across by 1080 pixels down. So it's only 960 pixels to get the center of the square here. So I'll just move it a little bit further off and then we can do the same thing with this square. So P for position, make sure it is back there. Hit our position keyframe, scoot it forward and 960 minus 1200 there we go Gonna hit end to put the preview area here I'm going to select these hit f9 for easy ease zero on the numeric keypad to render and there we go now it's starting to look good look at this you just loop this forever you get this cool like edm abstract dj vj background it's pretty cool we're gonna have it reveal some text Learning how different ways to bring text on and off the screen will make you money in After Effects. That is how I bought my first big computer in college is just animating a bunch of text. So we need to make some text before we animate it. And we can do that by clicking on this little T tool up here for text. And then we can click anywhere in our composition and it automatically makes a new text layer and we'll type in tutorial. Excellent. And then you can hit enter on your numeric keypad to confirm that text, or you can just click off into the timeline area. And then we're going to want to move this to the center. So the first thing I'm going to do is go back and select my selection tool, which is also a V on the keyboard. And you can click and drag it and move it around, try and get it there. But you know, that's hard to get that centered. And even though off center looks really cool, you know, we're going to go for centered here. So a really easy way to do this is to have your text layer selected, go over to your align panel here. And if you don't see it, go up to window, align and while i'm here i see that i haven't saved my project yet so i'm just gonna hit Control shift s and save it 8e basics 02 because i may have accidentally recorded this tutorial in 1080 instead of 4k instead and that was not good enough so now we have our text layer selected we have our align panel open we've set the layers to align to composition and then we're going to put it in the center horizontally and center vertically and there we go perfectly in the center of our composition looking good now, if your text does not look like this, you can go over to your character panel and paragraph panel, and that will be able to change your text properties. You see it's centered now, and I've set to Gotham medium, and I have some extra horizontal spacing or tracking, but you can use whatever font you want. And these work just like in Photoshop, if you're used to that. If not, they should be pretty self-explanatory, and if they're not self-explanatory, I'll probably make a tutorial all about all the different text options one of these days. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that this comes on at the right time. So you can click and drag the front of this layer, which will be the beginning of the layer. Put it right where you want it to be, or you can hit Alt left bracket, and that just pumps it right there. And now in order to get this to reveal on the way we want it to, we're going to need to use a mask. So we're going to put this till it's all the way on. So that's looking good. And then we're going to click up here, and we're going to use this mask tool, which is also Q, I believe. Yep, Q. We're going to click and drag around our text. And now you can see as we drag it on, it's just revealing what is inside the square. And then like with anything in After Effects, you can animate it. So you see it automatically opens up our mask panel here, but you can get it to the same way just by twirling down these little disclosure triangles, get masks, or you can hit M on the keyboard to get mask or double tap M, M, M to get all our different mask options. So we're going to keyframe the mask path control, which is right there. Enable keyframe, we've got our keyframe there. I'm going to scoot forward or backward until it's all the way off. And then we're going to hit V or select our selection tool again to get off the mask tool. Double click on the mask. And now we can edit this all in just this normal transform. You can also just click and drag and select one point at a time, but we're not going to do it that way. We're just going to do it really simple. Double click it, hold Control Alt, and you can scale both sides at the same time. Otherwise, it'll just be one. So Control Alt and bring it in to right there looking good and now as we play it see it's looking like it comes right on just exactly right and this looks okay for now but if our text was a different color we can change that by going to our character tools making it red you can see right now it's in front of the squares and we don't want it to be in front of the squares we want it to be behind the squares so you just click and drag this below and you can see these are set up just like they were pieces of paper on a table. So the layers that are higher up in your timeline here are just like they're on top of the other layers, like they're on a table. So now we can change this back to white by clicking. 
There we go. It's looking good. It doesn't really need to be white, but I like the way that looks. So now if we play this, nice. And you can go ahead and sell that to someone for a million dollars because, you know, when you get to the really high-end motion graphics stuff, it tends to just be simpler stuff instead of the really complicated things. But we're going to want to make this even a little bit different. Oh, it looks like our thing got up above. There we go. Uh, tutorials down below. Looking good. So the next thing we want to do is have this be sort of a stencil for some video. So I'm going to import some video. You can double click in your project panel and that'll bring up a Finder or Explorer window. But the way I like to do it is just navigate to Finder or Explorer on my own, find where you want. This is Behind Glass 03 from the Meester Media Lens Junk Pack, which is available at meestermedia.com slash products. It is super great for motion graphics. I use it all the time for logo reveals, just like this. Click and drag in, there we go. Import it in and we can click and drag it into our timeline. There we go. And it just automatically overwrites stuff. So this right now is not a very good frame. We want it to have some more stuff going on. So I'm gonna actually bring this back to the beginning of our animation or where our text comes on and then click and drag and you see there we go, now we're getting some cooler stuff happening. So right about there would be a good start. And just like before, we can hit Alt left bracket with our layer selected to put the endpoint there. And I want this to be stenciled out by our text layer. And this is something you'll see all over the place in logo reveals and especially like titles for TV shows. So I'm just gonna move this below our text layer and we're gonna use what's called an alpha mat. So what it will do is an alpha is just another word for transparency in video terms. So we're gonna take the parts that are white here and have that display the video and the parts that are transparent will stay transparent. So to get to our alpha mat, we're gonna to have to go back to our previous controls, which if you remember is just hitting F4. And there we go. Then we're gonna select our behind glass 03 and get our track mat controls, click this and do alpha mat tutorial. And this takes the alpha from the layer above it and applies it to this layer. So there we go, now we get that. And that's looking pretty cool. It could have a little more stuff going on. So we're going to get into effects now. And this is going to be a pretty simple one. We're going to add a curves effect to this to start off with to make this a different color and make it a little brighter. So we're going to go over to our effects and presets here. This can also be accessed from window, effects and presets, or we can access effects down here. But I like doing it over here. And you can click and twirl these little disclosure triangles down also to get to what you want. But eventually you'll just learn what things are called. So we're gonna use the curves plugin and you can search it here to so URVS, color correction curves. It shows you which folder it's under and click and drag this onto our layer. And now you can see it automatically switches over to our effects controls. And if you've never used curves before, what it does is it maps the input luminance down here to the output luminance here. So you can see if we take what would be white or completely bright and we would take the output down you see it makes it dark all the way to black but then we can also take our blacks and we can move them all the way up to white and that's pretty cool that actually does exactly what i want it to but we're going to do it a different way to show you a little more of what curves can do so i want to make this brighter first so we can move the middle brighter and look at that and now right now it's too yellow which is a lack of blue so we're going to add blue which if you've watched Meester Media tutorials before, this is second nature to you because color theory, but if you haven't, then welcome to, to color stuff. See, that makes it white. So we're gonna take away red and we're gonna take away some green. And now it's a nice bluey type color. If we move back towards a little darker, we might contrast it up some. So you add contrast by making the bright parts brighter and by making the dark parts darker. So there you go. Now you can see it has more contrast. And if we undo this alpha mat just for a second, we can see what our curves did. So you can see without the curves, you click this little button that disables it. It's how it is before. And with it, it makes it look like that. So completely different, really cool, cool look at our alpha mat back. And now we're starting to get somewhere. Hit N there. And we'll preview this out. So now that's looking pretty cool. But we want this to have even more, more going on. So we're going to add a glow to this. If we try to go over to our effects and presets and we type in glow. See, we have a glow here, which is great. We can add this on. And that does make it brighter. But if we zoom in, you can see that it doesn't really bloom out from outside 
of our text. And I'm using middle click on my mouse to drag around this composition. You can also use spacebar to drag around just like you would in Photoshop or Premiere. Middle click like you would in a 3D application. But, all right, so now you see it doesn't glow off to the side. And that's because of our alpha mat. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna use an adjustment layer. So what an adjustment layer does is it applies an effect to everything below it. So it'll apply in this case glow just to this behind glass image. And we will move this square up so it's not in there. Actually, I'll keep it down so we can see what an adjustment layer does. So you add an adjustment layer by going up to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer, or Control-Alt-Y, which is what we're going to want to do because keyboard shortcuts are important. So we've got Adjustment Layer 1. You see it added it right above our selected layer. And then we're going to add glow to that adjustment layer. And now you can see if we zoom in, it blooms out from the side of our text, which is much nicer. I'm just going to leave the default values there because I think they're fine. But you can see since this is an adjustment layer, it's also affecting our square here, which is not what we want. So just move the square above the adjustment layer. And there you go. So now we've got most of what we want done, done. It's looking pretty cool, I think. I might move that footage a little bit in time. So you can do that by clicking and dragging and then moving the endpoint. Or you can click on this little grayed out part and then see that gets a different tool on your cursor. You can click and drag and that moves what is inside of your in and out points. So there it is. And now, this should be a little neater. That might be a little too far, so I'll move it back. And you can see there are these little green lines that are appearing above our timeline, and that is showing which frames are rendered. You see, it hasn't rendered these frames out here, but if I put my playhead there, see it renders that frame, and renders that frame. So there we go. I think that's looking pretty cool. One last thing we're going to want to do is make this all scale up through the entire time. And there's two different ways that we can do this. First of all, I'm going to select all these by hitting Control A, and then I'm going to collapse all of them so we don't see these keyframes anymore by hitting U, just like we talked about before. You can also just twirl the little triangles yourself, but it's much easier to do it this way. Now, in order to get these scaling up the entire time, we can either do what's called pre-composing and pre-compose this, which will basically put these in a folder, and then we can manipulate that folder with the same sort of things that we did before. So if we select all these with Control A, and then we'll hit Control shift c to pre-compose, or you can go to Layer, Pre-Compose. Then we'll just hit OK here. See right now, nothing changed up here, but we just have one layer down here. So you have this pre-comp one. And that has our same transform controls as before, so we can S for scale. And we can start the scale at 100% here. Go to the end and make it like 105%. If we play that back, you can see it's sort of slowly animating on and scaling up, which is nice. And if we want to change anything, we can also dive back into this composition. Pre-composing is a super powerful part of After Effects that we'll dive into more in a more advanced tutorial. But there's also another way of doing it. So go back to here and hit Control-Z until we get all of that undone. And I'm going to use a null object. And what a null is, is it's an empty layer that just contains properties. And you can assign those properties to other layers. So you can go to layer, new, null object, or control alt shift y, which is what I'm going to do, control alt shift y, see, we get this little square here, which will not be rendered at all, it is just a container for data, and it has, like we had before, p, s, r, you've got all the different things that you want, and now what we can do is called parenting, and what parenting does is it will apply the transforms from our parent object here, which in this case will be null 1, and apply those transforms to the child layers, which would be all the layers here. But then you can still manipulate the individual transforms of those children without affecting the parents. So let's select all of these, what will be child layers. We want the squares here. We want the text. And we want this one. We don't need to change the adjustment layer because it doesn't matter. But you can include it and it won't matter also here. But this is just, you know, practicing good habits. And then you can take this little spirally thing, you can click this, and this gets this little, what's called a pick whip. You take this, and you bring this up, and you select the null, and then you let go. And you can see automatically this parent has changed to null on all of these, and you can also just select whichever one you want. And now whenever we move this null around, it moves all of our layers. 
So very cool. But we can also move the layers inside that, just like I said before. So we'll, if we move that down, we can still move these individual squares, you know, inside of that, and it works fine. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to scale this up the entire time. So just like we did before, frame 0, scale to 100%, frame 100, uh, 105%. And it does just the same thing as before in a different way because parenting is a very powerful part of After Effects that more things need to include in. I wish you could parent stuff in Premiere easier. But there you go. Now you've made your first little animation. I think that looks pretty cool. If you made these squares a little more interesting, that could work as well. Another little thing which could be fun is you can animate other properties here. So you could go to our first square. You could hit R for rotation. Get add a keyframe here. Go to the end have this rotate you know 180 degrees so nothing changes there but as it goes it twirls up and let's have it overshoot again just like we did before so we'll make this like 200 degrees beforehand and we'll easy ease these keyframes f9 now if we play this back swoop up look at that very fun now, the only other thing we need to talk about before we've covered what I consider to be the basics of After Effects is getting this out onto your computer. Because right now you have this great RAM preview, but you can't upload this to YouTube or Dropbox and you'll get paid your million dollars for this excellent animation. So you render this out by going to Composition, either Add to Render Queue, which works, but whenever it's rendering inside of After Effects, you can't still be working in After Effects at the same time, which for me is a no, no go. So we're going to go to Composition, Add to Adobe Media Encoder Q or Control-Alt-M. You click that and wait just a second as Adobe Media Encoder launches. And there you go. It may take more or less time depending on what system you're on. But we get this. You see I've got an H.264 preset applied. We can render this to wherever we want. Right away it is set to the same folder that our project is saved in, which is great. I will call this, you know, Tutorial Animation v one r one save. And then we can change our presets, but you can also use whatever presets you have over here. So lots of people use these H.264 presets for uploading to web. They're great. You've also got web presets down here for YouTube, 1080, whatever works for you. Whenever you get to know how render setting works a little more, which is a whole different complete series of tutorials, you can start making your own. So if you get, you know, standards from different distributors, like you've got these couple Sony ones that they need for that. You just save them and use them for whatever you want. So we've got that set. You can change stuff by selecting in here. And so you get all of these great options. Like I said, just use a preset until you know what you're doing. That'll save you a lot of time and headache. But you can see in this window here, we've got this preview, but it's only selecting our work area that we set in After Effects, which is this part here. So in order to get this to render the full composition, you can either make your preview area all the way before you send it off with N, or you can just change this from work area to entire composition, or you can set whatever custom range you want by just clicking and dragging your in and out points. But I'll set this to entire composition, hit OK, and it's ready to go. You can just do this little play button, and it'll render out. It's nice and quick for you. I'll give you a nice little preview here, and that's that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little introduction to Adobe After Effects. I know it's a lot of information really fast. Feel free to go back and rewatch any sections that you thought you missed. Once again, the keyboard shortcuts are down in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. YouTube has a feature where you can watch stuff at a slower speed because I know sometimes I get excited and I talk a little fast, especially when I'm trying to compress the very basics of a huge piece of software like Adobe After Effects inside of a 30-ish minute tutorial. Check out misnewmedia.com slash products. We've got all sorts of good stuff that'll help make your life easier. Like the lens junk pack, which you saw in here. We've got LUTs. We've got light leaks, everything you need to just make make your stuff pop a little more easy without doing extra work, which I like doing. Also, be sure to subscribe to the Mason Media YouTube channel. We've got new videos coming out at least every week, sometimes more, trying to do more. Lots of DaVinci Resolve tutorials. I want to start doing more After Effects tutorials because After Effects is just tons and tons of fun, and there's so many tutorial possibilities for After Effects. Leave a comment down below with any things you want to be seeing in After Effects or Resolve or Premiere or Photoshop or... You know, whatever your druthers is, I've been learning Houdini on the side too. Blender's cool. Cinema 4D, still got that in my back pocket. 
Also, be sure to like and share the video because that helps me out. And the more I get helped out, the more videos I make, the better videos I make, etc. It helps you out. Helping me helps you. So like and share the video, etc. Once again, I'm Theo with Meester Media. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>